You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. So as I'm sure we all know, Borderlands 2 is a loot-based shooter, and in most cases, the best weapons in the game are obtained by farming specific bosses for their legendary weapon drops. Depending on the weapon that you're looking for, farming for specific legendaries can prove to be very difficult and frustrating. This is because it's going to take a while before you can obtain the weapon you're looking for from the boss in question. Fortunately, there are a lot of amazing weapons in Borderlands 2 that can be obtained by simply completing some of the game's side quests. As a result, these weapons are typically called mission or quest reward weapons, and in some cases, some of the quest reward weapons are actually better than some of the legendaries that you can obtain. Before we start, in order to be on this list, the weapon in question has to be received upon completing a quest. While it's okay if the weapon is farmable, it does have to be obtained from completing a specific quest. So while a weapon like the Grog Nozzle can be used if a quest is left incomplete, it's not going to be on this list because if you complete the beard that makes the man, you lose the Grog Nozzle. But without further ado, these are what I think are the top 10 best quest or mission reward guns and weapons in Borderlands 2. Let's go. Number 10, the Trespasser. So the Trespasser is a weapon that you might find slightly underwhelming when you first acquire it. Like all Blue Rarity Jacob snipers, the Trespasser is a bolt-action rifle which limits its fire rate potential, and when compared to most other Jacob snipers, it has reduced base damage. However, once you get towards Borderlands 2's endgame, the Trespasser becomes much more useful. Uh, the Trespasser's ability to bypass shields and deal damage directly to an enemy's health bar can prove to be really effective. I'd say this is especially the case for two raid boss fights. While fighting Pyro Pete, you can remove his face mask, which allows you to perform critical hits on him while his shield is still up. Normally, you would have to remove his shield, then you could aim at his mask and then knock it off. And the other time the Trespasser can be useful is up against Veracitus. Verastus always spawns with Chief Nagawatu, who will eventually give his massive shield to Verastus. Provided you're quick enough, you can kill the Chief with the Trespasser, so Verastus will never receive the massive shield. Uh, while I wouldn't recommend using this weapon up against most mob-type enemies, it's still pretty doable. You're just going to find that it may take a few more shots than it normally would to take some enemies down, and generally, the best cases to use the Trespasser are up against enemies with relatively low health, um, but really big shields. To get a Trespasser, you will need to complete the side quest called Animal Rights. This quest can be started after Bloodwing has been killed by Jack, and involves freeing the various stalkers and skags throughout the entire area of the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve. Number 9, The Sword Splosion. I think we can all agree that while the sword splosion is definitely awesome, it's kind of weird too. Aside from the name, the sword splosion is Borderlands 2's only legitimate E-Tech weapon from Torg, and unlike your conventional E-Tech splat guns from other manufacturers, the sword splosion shoots swords that explode on impact into even more swords which also explode. I recommend trying your luck at trying to get one with the vertical grip or the casual prefix. This version fires three sword projectiles as opposed to just one, and is capable of dealing much more damage as a result. Um, all that said, the sword explosion isn't without its drawbacks. The sword explosion isn't particularly great to use at long distance. Unlike the slow hand E-Tech shotgun, the projectiles don't travel forever and will eventually fall and explode after a certain distance. You can improve the sword explosion's range with skills that boost bullet speed. You will also find that the child swords that the sword explosion spawns can hurt the player. While you can eventually get used to this, I still occasionally find myself walking into the child sword and losing a decent chunk of health or going in to fight for your life. At the end of the day though, I say this weapon's positives outweigh its negatives, and this is a gun that you're definitely going to want to have. To get a sword explosion, you will need to complete a quest called the Sword in the Stoner, which is a part of the Dragon Keep DLC. Um, it's a fairly easy quest, and you shouldn't have too many problems. Number 8, the Kitten. The Kitten is a pretty unique assault rifle in Borderlands 2. Unlike most of the other assault rifles in the game, the Kitten comes with a times 3 projectile multiplier, and after a period of sustained fire, you will come to realize that the Kitten assault rifle fires in a fixed smiley face pattern. 
It's also nice that you're getting three projectiles per shot at the cost of one bullet, and because the kitten is a moxie weapon, it will heal the player from both direct and indirect damage sources like melee and damage dealt with grenades. The kitten is a really nice weapon up against most lightly armored bandits and the vast majority of creatures. I would say that you're going to start to have problems fighting enemies that have significant armor, like the shield-toting nomads, as well as some of the more heavily armored bandit-type enemies. This is because unlike some of the better weapons in Borderlands 2, the kitten doesn't deal any splash damage. And you may also find that the kitten is pretty bad at anything beyond medium distance, because while the smiley face pattern can make the kitten a lot more useful for hip firing, the projectiles can spread pretty wide and you lose the benefits from using multiple projectiles at a more significant distance. Overall though, the kitten is really good. To acquire the kitten, you will need to start and complete the quest called Everybody Wants to be Wanted. This quest ultimately involves placing posters across Torque's Campaign of Carnage DLC. Number 7, The Rapier. When it comes to melee weapons, I don't think you're going to do any better than the Rapier Assault Rifle. This is because the Rapier's special effect provides 200% bonus to melee damage. On average, most other weapons in Borderlands 2 that have blade attachments deal 50% bonus to melee damage. Since the Rapier is a Captain Blade weapon, it also bears a curse effect. While you could deal much more melee damage with the Rapier Assault Rifle, you also take more melee damage as well. That said, if you play Melee Zero very well, you may find that you never even have to worry about getting hit with enemy melee attacks. You'll also find that the Rapier is a really awful gun when it is used as such. This is because the base damage of the Rapier is really low, and while this may not prove to be much of a problem in either Normal or True Vault Hunter mode, you'll find that it's going to be severely lacking in Ultimate Vault Hunter mode and beyond. If you want one of these, you can get a Rapier by acquiring the Message in a Bottle from Hater's Folly. All of the message in the bottle side quests are pretty easy to do, so you shouldn't have too much of a problem finding this one. Uh, plus, when you do, you are going to be getting one of the best melee weapons that Borderlands 2 has to offer. Number 6, the Jolly Roger. So the Jolly Roger is a really good shotgun that's frequently overlooked in favor of other weapons like the Omen, Twister, Butcher, Conference Call, or Interfacer. I'm not really sure why that is, because the Jolly Roger is easily in the same weight class in terms of damage, and it's much, much easier to acquire as it's just a quest reward weapon. While the Jolly Roger does consume a lot of ammo, you're still getting about 18 or more projectiles per shot. For the sake of comparison, the Ravager with a foregrip usually provides you with about 18 projectiles per shot. However, you're consuming one additional bullet per trigger pull with the Ravager than you are with the Jolly Roger. You may also find that the fixed skull and crossbones pattern makes it easier to predict where the projectiles are going to go, which will make hip firing a little bit easier. Also, unlike very good high projectile count shotguns like the Ravager or Quad, the Jolly Roger can come in all elements except for explosive. This is a really nice shotgun on all of the characters, however I think it's ultimately going to be best on Salvador, though you may have some luck on Gage if she has close enough, or you might find this is a good gun to use with Zero's Boar against somebody like Hyperius. To get the Jolly Roger, all you have to do is complete a quest called Just Desserts for Desert Deserters, located in Wormwater as a part of the Captain Scarlet DLC. Um, while you will have to travel through several areas during the quest, and you will have to complete another side quest first called the Hermit, the Jolly Roger shotgun is a fitting reward. In fact, it may be a little too generous considering that it's so easy to get. Number 5, the Hail. In my opinion, the Hail is one of the best assault rifles in Borderlands 2. That said, if you are playing on either Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, you may find that you won't particularly like the hail as it becomes much, much more difficult to use the lower your field of view is. In fact, if you're playing with a field of view of 70 on consoles, you may want to turn it up if it's allowed on your platform. Now, the hail's biggest drawback is its projectile pattern. Instead of firing bullets that go straight out of the barrel and towards the target, like 99% of the other guns in Borderlands 2, the Hail fires projectiles that have this massive arc 
and the bullets are supposed to fall on enemies. Uh, now, on platforms that you can increase your FOV, it's actually more viable for the player to aim slightly downwards and practice scoring criticals this way instead of waiting for the projectiles to quote-unquote hail down on enemies. Provided you're using the strategy, the hail has a lot of really good things going for it. Unlike the Kitten, the Hail benefits from Grenade Damage Bonus, it heals the player for a certain portion of the damage it deals, and the Hail not only has a significantly improved Critical Hit modifier, but it also has projectiles that can split into two after certain distance. As with all unlisted projectiles, the Hail will deal more damage with the B-Shield provided you're firing from far enough away to get those projectiles to split into two. Now, the hail is acquired by completing round 5 of the Slaughter Dome in the fridge. If you can manage to get this weapon from that quest, it is going to be one of the best weapons for Axton the Commander. Number 4, the Flame of the Firehawk. So I know that the Flame of the Firehawk isn't really a gun or weapon per se, however I do think it's both one of the best quest rewards that you get in Borderlands 2, as well as one of the best offensive based shields in Borderlands 2. Unlike most other Nova Shields, the Flame of the Firehawk will continuously emit Novas while the shield is depleted. Once the shield starts recharging, this stops and won't trigger again until the shield is fully recharged. This effect can prove to be really powerful provided you've got a Flame of the Firehawk that matches the level of the enemies that you're fighting. This shield is used to great effect by all characters, however it might just be best on Krieg. Krieg has skills that can increase the amount of time your shields are depleted, which can make the Flame of the Firehawk's continuous Nova effects last a lot longer. Once you start combining these continuous Novas with Moxie weapons like the Grog Nozzle and Krieg's Elemental Empathy skills, Krieg can prove to be really difficult to kill. However, regardless of what character you ultimately choose to use the Flame of the Firehawk with, the key to using the shield effectively is to increase your shield recharge delay. Once the shield starts recharging, it will again need to fully recharge before you can trigger the continuous Novas again. Now, to get the Flame of the Firehawk, you'll have to play through a series of side quests called Cult Following that are given by Incinerator Clayton in Frostburn Canyon. You get Flame of the Firehawk by completing the last of these quests called Cult Following the Enkindling. Number 3, The Lady Fist. It amazes me that one of Borderlands 2's best weapons is a quest reward. It also amazed me when Gearbox decided to buff the Lady Fist in late 2013. The Lady Fist's 400% critical hit damage was already pretty ridiculous, but when they improved it to 800%, that just made the end of both normal and true Vault Hunter mode a whole lot easier. What's also amazing is that you're getting this on a gun that's already known for being ridiculously accurate with great recoil and fairly decent fire rate. You may find that you will rarely, if ever, have to aim down the sights while using the Lady Fist. And plus, because this is a Hyperion pistol, you're going to retain maximum accuracy longer than you would with most Hyperion SMGs. If you're playing as Salvador, you can wield a Lady Fist in the left hand while Gunzerking to massively boost the critical hit damage of the weapon Salvador is wielding in the right hand. This can make a pretty big difference with bad weapons, and it can make a crit-focused weapon like the Interfacer that much more powerful. Wielding an Interfacer and a Lady Fist is a really useful strategy up against most raid bosses in Borderlands 2. You receive the Lady Fist during the Uncle Teddy side quest in the Arid Nexus Badlands. You have to choose between Una Baja or Hyperion. Now, whatever you do, don't choose Hyperion as this provides you with the Tidal Wave Shotgun which is possibly one of the most underwhelming guns and weapons in Borderlands 2. So please, help Unabaha and get the Lady Fist, and you'll have your hands on one of the most powerful weapons in Borderlands 2. Number 2, the Pimpernel. It's fair to say that the Pimpernel is easily one of the best sniper rifles in Borderlands 2. When it comes to killing something with a single shot, I'd say that the Pimpernel sniper rifle is possibly the best sniper rifle in the game for that purpose. That said, the Pimpernel is fairly unconventional. Instead of firing directly at someone's head or at one of their crit spots, you're going to want to aim slightly south of their critical hit spots. This is because when the Pimpernel's projectile strikes a surface, it emits five orbs that travel upward that can also hit and deal damage to enemies. Typically, you're going to want to aim at an enemy's knee or groin. 
Uh, usually for most humanoid or raider or psycho type enemies, you should shoot for the knee, and loaders can be shot in the groin or upper thigh. While the Pimpernel excels on pretty much any character you use it with, the Pimpernel works really well with Zero's boar ability. Occasionally, you can get the projectile orbs to hit enemies twice. And it's also worth mentioning that since these five projectile orbs that spawn are unlisted, they do benefit from using the Beast Shield. To acquire the sniper rifle, you will need to complete the Don't Copy That Floppy side quest mission that's located in Washburn Refinery during the Captain Scarlet and her Pirate's Booty DLC. This is an incredibly powerful sniper rifle that you're not going to want to miss. Plus, that side quest is pretty easy. Number 1. The Sandhawk well, I'm sure all of the Borderlands veterans watching this video aren't surprised. For the uninitiated, the Sandhawk is a very powerful doll SMG that fires projectiles in the shape of a flying bird. The Sandhawk comes in all elements and is capable of dealing massive amounts of damage to everything from regular mob enemies to even some of the game's toughest raid bosses when combined with the Bee Shield. What's kind of crazy about all of this is that you just casually get the Sandhawk as you play through the Captain Scarlet and her Pirate's Booty DLC. As long as you play far enough to complete the quest called Whoops, you will get your hands on a Sandhawk. Now, if you're looking for the best version of the Sandhawk, you're ideally going to want one that comes in the corresponding element that you're looking for, and you'll also want a Sandhawk with the doll weapon stock for SMGs. This will boost the burst count from the original three rounds to four, which can greatly increase lethality. While you can use the Sandhawk to great effect without the B-Shield, I would say it's best or more commonly used with the B-Shield. Overall though, the Sandhawk is going to be pretty great on all characters, uh, though I think the most useful character will probably be Maya, as she's already optimized for SMGs. Again though, if you want this gun, you're just going to have to play through the main questline for the Scarlet DLC and complete the mission called Whoops. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.